Hi all, I'm Nitesh Goel and welcome back to our channel ML Phone Analytics. In this video tutorial, we will be studying about Azure Common Data Model and this is the key point or the key power of the Azure Data Lake Gen 2, I would say. And if you want to deep dive or to learn the basics of the Azure Data Lake Gen 2, then I will be providing you a link of my previous tutorial related to the different kind of storages discussed in the Azure. And let's move forward with the common data model. So this is the overview or you can say the complete uh, kind of model of the common data, common data model folder for the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And uh, let me explain what I mean by common data model. It's like, uh, let's say we have different kind of storage services and uh, ingestion services, preparation services for the Azure and even cognitive services as well. Also, latest in the latest power bi is also in very kind of demand and different 365 uh, microsoft 365 services as well and you can just save all of their data in a common place so you can just connect every service like power bi as your data factory data bricks as your ml different cognitive services provided by azure and even the Office 365 services or the Dynamics 365 services provided by Microsoft in a single place with the help of common data model folder of Azure Data Lake Gen 2. So how it works is like, for example, uh, I'm doing an ingestion service that is uh, moving some on-premise data into the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. For that, I use the Azure Data Factory and save that model, save its data into a common data model folder. Then I want to process something over it or prepare data for the analysis. Then I pick that data with the help of data breaks from the common data model folder only. Then Azure data breaks, prepare something, do some analysis over it. Then again, move it into the common data model with some different kind of uh, processes done over it, of course. And you can also save same data into the Azure SQL Data Warehouse as well, if you want to do some massive value processing, considering it is a big massive data, big data, I am saying over here. And also, key feature, Azure ML. You can connect Azure ML service as well on that common data. And after completion of everything, you think you have, you want to represent data somewhere, then what you will do? Just go and pick the Microsoft Power BI service and do the di different type of semantics over it and just display it over there. And how Power BI uses the CDM folder? It uses basically a data flow. We can create a data flow with the help of CDM folder data. We can just connect them and just use it anywhere if you want. And if you don't have that kind of access or if you are confused that how you have, you will be moving the CDM folder data to the Power BI data flows, you can even create a pipeline between Azure SQL service and the common data model folder and move that data into the S, uh, SQL tables and then use that data from there. And what, and it will just do the thing that you like and what kind of advantage you can get from it. I will jump on to that. But before do that, just one more point regarding to Azure SQL, I would say. For example, if I have moved, created some model in Power BI, I can save that model into the CDM folder. That is one, one thing that it can do. And if I want to provide the same model to different persons in my organization, not just model, I'm saying talking about data. And what we can do is, instead of just sharing our Power BI reports to, with them, what we can do, move that data into CDM folder, then from CDM folder, move that data into the Azure SQL tables. Then other data scientists or the business owners, like in our same organization or, or your clients, we can just show that data into a different form of reports in whichever, in whichever form you want. Because it's not necessary that everyone is having a certificate or the license for the Power BI and sometimes it is hard to create Power BI presentations, PowerPoint presentations with the Power BI data. So in that case, you can move to that SQL tables. So CDM folder of the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 empowers you with everything 
like by connecting each and every service provided by Azure and Microsoft, move complete data into a single location and just reuse that data in how in whichever in whichever way you want. And for the if I talk about the business analysts, they can use the Power BI, low or no code. And if we move towards the like different services of Azure, like Azure SQL, Azure Databricks, you can embed your code as well and then comes the role of data engineers and data scientists. So they dive into some kind of code and other things over here. So let's move on to the advantages of our common data model. The first thing is simplified integration of data obtained from different processes of Microsoft Azure. As I said earlier, we are just simply connecting all the services or their data into a single location. So we have simplified many things like over here. We don't have to keep the replica of the same data in different location and then pull the data from different locations to combine it. We can just get complete data from a single location that is common data middle folder. And we can, with the help of this, we can even maintain the structural, maintain structural model or we can use common structural model for all the data, for all the processes going on on the same level of data. It might be a bit confusing, but let me come again. For example, let's say you have four processes running like Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Bricks, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and Azure ML. And each one did something in a sequential way. So instead of saving their data differently at different locations, what we can do is just combine their data in a single location that is CDM folder over here and they will have a structural, I would say good structure or the common structure further for the another processes that will be working on that data. However, you can create different folders as well. However, still if you want to provide a structural integrity over here, then you can achieve that with the help of CDM folder. Now let's move into the prevention of duplicacy data. Yes. You are provide you are preventing the redundancy of the data over here by saving the complete data into the same location, and this helps in optimizing our models based on Azure Data Azure Data Lake Gen two, and ultimately it will reduce your cost as well. Another thing you can use this facility to standardize your entities. Different entities like since they will be uh, having a common schema or the structure so we are kind of standardizing our data models over here. So if you want to standardize things throughout your organization, then this is a powerful tool for you. And another thing, centralization of data access approval. This is very important over here. Like any other service of Azure, CDM over the CDM folder, you can provide access to each and every person separately or even with the help of Azure data um, I would say AD groups, yes, AD groups we are familiar with that and we put our organization contacts over here like that. So you can even go for a single person wise or over a group of people. You can just provide read, execute or write whatever permissions you want to provide in each, on a, each and every level of the folder. Like let's say our folder name is ML for analytics and it contains like say 10 separate folders then each folder containing five files then you can provide access on different access like read or write or execute or whatever there are the other different services provided by Azure at the moment separately to a set to an independent person so that is a very powerful thing over here you don't have to go and provide each and every person access as different services saving their data at different locations. Now you can just centralize things at one location and just provide access over here. So things simplified a lot. Helping you prevent your money, time, and making your models fast and more optimized, I would say. And coming to the structures of the um, common data model folders. So this, this is the one structure which is being provided by the Microsoft in its documentation I will be sharing its link in the description as well and another structure is this one I will be providing its link as well so let's understand this one this is the structure which we will get 
until unless we are not using Power BI data flows for saving or creating the common data model folder. This kind of structure will be found if any other service is creating common data model folder. And in that common data model folder, let's say CDM data is our folder, we will get a manifest.cdm.json file. What does it mean? This means it contains complete met metadata or you can say, let's say you have these entities, entity one, entity two, then what kind of relation is there? What kind of operations are done over on these entities? And if there are, what is the relation between entity folder one and entity folder two? All that kind of data is saved in this file, metadata file manifest dot cdm dot json and this is our core folder and there are two core mode folders then there are these entity files and other than this in these entity folders we will see corresponding to each entity file there will be a cdm dot json file and these individual files or the small files will help us understand the metadata of these csv files like what kind of data columns are there like date columns, string columns, different kind of data any you can understand about a CSV file or if there is some formula applied at some time. So all those kind of information is provided in these entities and manifest.cdm.json uh, let's say I would say it is the upper level metadata for all the things present in a CDM data folder. So let's move on to the last thing that is, oh sorry, it is not the last thing. There is one more thing about after this that is data flows with CDM. So let's understand the second structure of model, it's common data model. You will find this kind of structure only in one case when Power BI data flows are being used to create a common data model folder. Let's say uh, our data flow name is data flow one. And similarly, it has few entities like entity one, entity two, entity three, and different. And each entity have different CSV files. Basically, these correspond to a table being created in a data flow. So, for a single table, there can be more files, and like data is being distributed into different small files. Let's say having a limit of one GB or two GB, I think, as far as I remember. And same as manifest.cdm.json file, this model.json file have a metadata regarding the data flow which is present in this folder, data flow of one. And corresponding to these entity one data file one.csv, this is an exception. In this kind of folder being created by a data flow, we will not find these entity one.cdm.json files. Those are only for other services for data flow. We will only get model.json. That is another thing to remember. So let's move on to our last topic that is data flows with CDM. I think so far you would have guessed we can not only create CDM folders with the help of data flows, we can also use CDM folders to create data flows. Right? That is like if you want to create a CDM folder or common data model folder with the help of data flows, what you have to do is while creating a new workspace, enable storage as Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Then only your data will be saved in Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Otherwise, even if you have connected your account of Power BI with Azure Data Lake Gen 2 and you are not enabling that storage while creating a data flow, your data will not be found in Azure Data Lake Gen 2. So just remember that point to enable common data model or to store data of a data flow into a common data model folder, do take on as your data like gen two. And that is one part. Now, what if I have to create a common data model or sorry, data flow with the help of CDM? Yes, you, there is an option provided by Power BI now. All you have to do is go in select the location of your common data model JSON file or the model.json file and put that link into the location asked by Power BI while creating a data flow and you will get your all the things that you want into that location. However, there are few limitations for that or the few catches I would say. While 
creating the CDM while creating the data flow with the help of CDM you will have to do few things one of them is like if I am creating this data flow with the help of CDM I should have read and execute permission over that CDM folder not just the CDM folder also on these files and we will have to provide individual access on the lowest entity then over the other folder then each and every entity separately I know that is a cumbersome thing over here but that is how it is to make the things more secure so you will have to provide read and write execute for this for this for this over this JSON file and over this folder as well then only that can be used to create a data flow and for now if I have created a data flow and if I want to share with my colleague, colleague let's say X and Y and I cannot just do that simply it is not simple as that if they also want to read this data flow even though if I have provided them access only to a data flow they will not be able to see any kind of data from it the reason for that is we will have to provide them read access on all the same files which are used to create this data flow in the common data model folder that is a very important point to remember otherwise they will not be able to see any kind of thing and they will even get an error that you don't have access to this data flow things like that and another catch over here is any data flow created with CDM folder cannot be used to create a linked entity just like any other data flow which we can use so that is a drawback over here so I think these these are the few points to keep in mind and common data model folder is essentially the key of Azure Data Lake Gen 2 while working on different services of Azure so please do keep that in mind and it will help you a lot while working with Azure and different cloud services provided by Microsoft so this is it guys and thank you very much for watching this video I hope you liked it and please do comment and subscribe and please let me know in case you want to learn a specific thing from me and I will be covering that for you and regarding the demos of course I will be providing you all the demos very soon regarding the Azure different kind of services created by Azure and how you can do different time of works like data processing data ingestion and all that thing and please remember to do subscribe and share and like it i hope you loved it and have a nice day